Hi everyone, how are you guys? Welcome to the 17th edition of uh, Naqshe Bazi. We have been trying to understand what was going on at the provincial levels in the wake of disintegration of uh, uh, Delhi Sultanate, isn't it? That's what we have been trying to uh, make some sense out of. Now, uh, the thing is, uh, I would like to discuss a couple of other kingdoms with you as well. We have already discussed quite a few. I hope you uh, have been enriched with all that discussion here. Now, we would like to just take care of a couple of other uh, important uh, uh, sultanates and kingdoms here at this stage. And then from next point onwards, we would uh, take up uh, Mughals and all those uh, uh, other developments and we will gradually develop into modern Indian history and its maps, right? So with that in mind, I would like to begin. If you recall, this is the map which we have been trying to understand all the players who are, you know, present here. As the Sultanate declines, right? We have spoken about Gujarat, Malwa, Bengal, Gondwana. I will not be talking a lot about Vijayanagar and Bahamani because I believe uh, you can and you must take care of it. Various aspects of it are easily available. You can read it, you can discuss it. If you want me to look into it, please comment uh, and uh, I will definitely try and include certain aspects of it in my discussions. Okay, uh, today I intend to talk about two very lesser known kingdoms but who are very unique and their entire contribution to our heritage must be highlighted. They are right here, Jaunpur Sultana and the second one is the Kingdom of Kashmir. These are the two facets that I am going to be taking up today. All right. We will begin with Jaunpur Sultanate. It also, you know, uh, is created in the wake of death of uh, Feroz Shah Tughlaq and the ensuing war of succession within the Tughlaq camp. And by 1394, Malik Sarwar, the governor of Jaunpur, declares independence. And this entire Sultanate, it extends till 1470s right till the time of Lothis and they were the biggest challenger of Lothis in North India. Right, the founder is Malik Sarwar. Malik Sarwar, uh, he came from a family of Abyssinia, that is modern day Ethiopia. He came from Ethiopia and he was a Shia. He was a Shia and as court records suggest, he may have also been a eunuch. So this very interesting personality, he declares independence and uh, establishes this grand kingdom called as Jaunpur Sultanate. Its most important ruler is Ibrahim Shah, who rules in the first half of the 15th century. During this time, their uh, you know entire uh, kingdom does expand. Uh, very nicely, right? Uh, from Bihar, Darbanga, Bihar to Kannauj, right? And uh, they were also threatening Delhi. They even threatened at one point of time, they were even threatening Bengal, which was under house of Ganesh at this stage, right? So, very fascinating. They must have been very, very powerful. And this dynasty is also known for establishing a lot of schools, colleges, madarsa. Their cultural contribution, it far outlasts the time period which is mentioned here. The cultural contribution of uh, Sharki dynasty, they are also known as a Sharki dynasty, Sharki dynasty. It far outlives their actual uh, reigning period. The sultans of uh, Sharki dynasty, they were great builders. In the background, you could notice the Jama Masjid of Jaunpur. 
they did not simply copy Delhi's style. In fact, we would notice a lot of influence of Hindu art as well. There are lofty gates, huge arches as you can see. Malik Muhammad Jaisi came from Jodhpur. So as you can see, the schools, the colleges which they constructed, they had a long lasting influence. They had a long lasting influence. Man Singh Tomar, the famous king of Gwalior, the guy who is considered solely responsible for, for transforming Drupad into a sophisticated court art. Man Singh Tomar, he paid tribute to the Sharki Sultan. He paid tribute to these Sharki Sultans. Jaunpur, the capital, it came to be known as Shiraz of East. Shiraz was a city in Iran which was famous for its unique architecture. It was a Shia city. It was a Shia cultural center. And similarly in the eastern side, Jodhpur had become the center of Shia uh, culture. And hence the name Shiraz of the East. Finally, Behlo Lodi. He really, you know, tried to cut down their powers and in uh, 1479, Sikandar Lodi, he came into the power and uh, he annexed the entire Jaunpur. He annexed the entire Jaunpur region. Right, thus bringing an end to a, a lesser known but still a very uh, important chapter of our history. Now let's take up uh, the Kashmir region for our discussion. Gilgit, Aksai Chin, Ladakh, Kashmir Valley, Jammu region. These are all the geographical divisions here. Right? Kashmir was, uh, uh, you know, independent for quite some time. Kashmir was independent of quite some time. In fact, as we look into medieval history, we find mentioned by Al-Biruni, Al-Biruni, the great traveler who came to India in around 1020s uh, with uh, Mahmud Ghazni, Somnathwal. So Al-Biruni, he came to India and uh, he did try and enter Kashmir, but he tells us that nobody can enter Kashmir, even Hindus are not allowed to enter Kashmir unless they know the nobility personally. Kashmir at this stage was dominated by Kashmir Shaivism. Kashmir Shaivism, right? Uh, the Mongol invasions changed the dynamics. The Mongol invasions began in 1320. Your Chagatai Khanate, they started, uh, you know, regularly incurring these, these Khanates under Dalucha, the Mongol leader. They started invading Kashmir and the Hindu dynasty of Kashmir started facing very tough time. A lot of Muslims now started entering the region via Baramula Pass. Right? At this stage we hear of a person called as Shah Mir. Shah Mirza actually. Right? Shah Mirza, he is from Swat. He's from Swat Valley and this Shah Mirza guy, he gradually increases his power and we are being informed that in 1339, he usurps the throne and establishes what is known as the Shah Mir dynasty. This dynasty will rule till 1560s. Right, when one of the uh, relatives of Babur will take it over and then finally Akbar in 1580s will capture Kashmir. Akbar was a great conqueror if you can see. Akbar is the one who is unifying all this region, all these regions across India, especially North India. Right. So, uh, in 1389, in 1389, Shah Mir's 
grandson sultan sikandar he comes to the throne look at his time period 1389 to 1413 he was a contemporary of timur timur came in 1398 he was in touch with timur and by several accounts he seems to be a very bigoted person he threw away most of the brahminical families outside kashmir he allowed only 11 brahmin families to stay in the valley for the upkeep of remaining temples he destroyed the martan the sun temple right so he was a bigot by several standards right uh, and then in 1413 he dies there are uh, you know there is a bit of chaos for some time and finally in 1420 Sikandar's son Zainul Abidin he becomes the emperor of Kashmir and he rules for next 50 long years 1420 to 1470 he is called as Akbar of Kashmir because of his wonderful uh, outlook he is also known as Budh Shah the great king in kashmiri language he is also called as budh shah modern scholars they call him akbar of uh, kashmir he first thing which he does is he cancels all the orders of his dad sikandar he brought back a lot many brahmin families back to the valley reconstructed thousands of temples which have been destroyed right since mongol invasion till his dad see restored more than 100 temples gave rich grants to them gave rich grants to these temples made village communities responsible for the maintenance of law and order see how beautiful abolishes a jazia cow slaughter is banned cow slaughter is banned he withdrew the ban on sati because he did not want to interfere into hindu practices so he said you know what uh, do as you please and he withdrew the ban on sati he knew hindi persian tibetan and kashmiri language very beautiful very beautiful had several books sanskrit books translated into persian he was you know fond of music had mahabharat translated into persian there's a very wonderful book in kashmiri history it is called as raj tarangini written by a kashmiri brahmin kalhan it's a 12th century book right so it of course does not have all the history it only talks about the history till 12th century history of kashmir it mentions lalita aditya it mentions a lot many interesting details queen didda it talks about right rajatarangini this fellow zainul abidin he hired sanskrit scholars he hired sanskrit scholars to not only translate rajatarangini into sanskrit but also to update them people such as jona raj they were hired to update it and bring the book to current levels current time levels jona raj and siddh raj were hired for this all that indicates that this man uh looked at the world which was slightly unique from the way people were looking at uh, issues back then right he also focused on the economic development he also focused on the economic development of kashmir he sent artisans from his kingdom to as far as samarkand why so that they can go and learn paper making book binding interesting isn't it played a key role in the development of uh, 
pashmina shawl industry in uh, kashmir he started encouraging artisans uh, to come up with these pashmina shawls beautiful shawls i'm sure you must have uh, read about them right he also promoted uh, other industries such as uh, you know musket making fireworks bottle making constructed several dams canal and bridges right even an artificial island right in the ruler lake right in the ruler lake this is the coinage the silver coin of zainul abidin right this is the tomb of bud shah so as you can see i hope now you can make some sense out of these maps we have dedicated almost three sessions here this is khandesh another very small kingdom which emerges during this entire uh, era of fragmentation and uh, khandesh is later captured by akbar 1601 right so more or less these are all the bigger powers vijayanagar and bahmani are present right here okay as you can see the rajput confederacy is here this is the 1398 map right this is the time of 1500 see lodis are once again becoming powerful jaunpur is gone this is 1500 and now let's have one look at 1525 map this is 1525 map this is just before uh, babar's entry into the subcontinent and uh, how things will start moving from this onwards for that if you want to understand that you will first once again have to begin your journey from central asia and see how come why these mughals are coming in Right, we will do that into the next session. We will see in what context the Mughals are forced to come here. Okay, God bless you. Have fun, and uh, I will see you around. Take care.